Today we're going to learn Perek Gimel of Sefer Shemuel. Keep in mind, in the past two Perakim, it seems to be we're setting up Shemuel for some form of greatness, right? That's how we explained the last time. Shemuel has this miraculous birth. He's the, 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 the child that Hannah has been waiting for so desperately. We kind of learn in Perek Bet, that it's not just not just Hannah who's been wait, waiting for this child, but really all of Am Yisrael has been waiting for a child where we see the corruption of the family of Eili. So we get the sense that perhaps there's more, there's more to it than we think, and that Am Yisrael lacks real leadership. Eili is old, his sons are corrupt, Shemuel comes on the scene, so we're looking forward to a better, better times, I would put it this way. So now we're going to see this Perek Shilishi, how... Hanan's intention um, was in as, uh, eluded that um, he will replace uh, Shimshon. To, to Shimshon, the, the Shofet? That, that, uh, that Shumuel uh, uh, would replace Shimshon because she was eluding that he would be in Azir. So I, 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 it's difficult to say that only in the sense that really Shimshon is a not we, what we would call a leader in the traditional sense. Shimshon, everything he does is on an individual basis. He's not really involved with anybody. But, but instead, Shemuel is going to be actual leader of the Jewish people. And, and her tefillah was almost the opposite way. The tefillah was almost, I just want to have a regular child, Zera Anashim. The fact that she makes him a Nazir probably speaks to a different factor. The fact that he's a Nazir might hint to the idea of how common it was to become a Nazir back then, which is something we don't really think of today, but it seems to be really part of the fabric of the religious society back then. So we have our Pedic Shilishi. And I just wanted to keep that framework in mind. The fact that Shemuel, Amisel, needs leadership. Shemuel is on the rise. He's this blessed child. And we're going to see in the third panic how this manifests. But also, as we read the panic, I want to remind you of the greater framework of the book. And which we said, the greater framework of the book, not just being the search for a king, but the search for the presence of God amongst Am Yisrael and eventually moving from a Mishkan to a Beit Mikdash to a chosen spot in Yerushalayim. So we start off the Perek. We have Hanar Shemuel Misharet et Adonai Lifnei Eili. Okay, fine. This we already know. Udvara Adonai haya yakar bayamim ahem en hazon nifratz. In those days, and this is a fascinating idea, prophecy is very rare. God's word was precious. In Hazun Nifratz, there's not too many people getting prophecies, and therefore we're going to be introduced to a story, as we can tell from this opening pasuk. Clearly, it's going to be a story about prophecy, but it's interesting to note it's something rare. It's not common. It probably highlights how distant the people are from God. That prophecy is not something common in any which way. So here is something interesting. Not only is Eli old, but we learn now Eli is blind. He can't see. Now there are two other stories in the Torah where we talk about somebody being blind, and the blindness is very integral to the plot of the story. We have the story of Yitzhak, which obviously I think we're all familiar with. And then the story of Yaakov, that he's blind, and therefore when he switches his hands, Vizif Raman Menashe, Yusuf tries to correct him. We're going to read it in a couple of weeks from now. Okay. So I'm expecting that the fact that Ali is blind should be central to the story in some way. Some of the commentators suggest it's going to explain why Shibuel is going to constantly run to Ali. He thinks he needs help. He's blind, he's a little bit helpless. That's one approach. But there's another approach that, that Adak suggests that I want to come to in a little bit. In Pasuk Gimal, 
ונר אלוהים טרם יכבה. ושמואל שוכב והיכל אדוני ששם ארון אלוהים. So the light, the candle of God, has yet to go out, yet to extinguish. And Shemuel is sleeping in Hechal Hashem, which also has Aron Elohim. We'll mention why we're talking about Aron Elohim. All the commentators point out, don't actually think Shemuel is sleeping where Aron actually is. No, he's a little bit in the rooms outside of, but within the Hechal Hashem compound. He's not sleeping with Aron, so why do you feel the need to mention Aron? That's number one. Number two, what's this Ner Elohim Terem Yichbeh? The light of the candle of God has yet to go out. The assumption here is you're talking about what light do you have in the Beit Mikdash that's lit specifically at nighttime. Since it's the holiday of Hanukkah, fine, right? And Menorah, that's what they're talking about. The Menorah has yet to extinguish why you're telling me this. I don't have to tell me, assumedly, to tell me some time of night. Okay, but he's sleeping anyway, so what do we care? It's a good question, and I'll come back to this, that Adat does something interesting on the blindness, and the light has yet to extinguish. He's going to do something interesting based off the Midrash of Hazal. Okay, so Eli, Shemuel is sleeping, where Aron HaElohim is present. Remind me, we'll have to come back to that, but let's actually see what happens in order for us to set us up to understand these things. Shemuel, This is one of the greatest Pesukim, because God calls out to Shemuel, oh, okay, prophecy, you told me prophecy was rare, okay. Then Shemuel, Shemuel answers Hineni. And we think Shemuel is answering the prophecy. And all of a sudden, we read the next Pasuk and we realize this Pasuk Dalit really set us up. It was uh, threw us a curveball. No, no, I didn't call you. Who does Shemuel think he's answering to? He thinks he's answering to the call of Eli, right? This makes sense. The commentators say Eli is blind. He's calling out in the middle of the night. He can't see. Shemuel runs. Maybe he needs help. Here I am. And he says, no, no, go, go back to sleep. Again, happens again in Pasuk Vav. Same idea. But again, it's funny. This time it doesn't set us up. This time we're kind of already specific. We are already, we know that the Shemuel is calling out to uh, Hashem calling out to Shemuel. Shemuel doesn't know. Shemuel doesn't realize. Meaning, it's clear from this story that we have a situation. Shemuel is not used to prophecy. God calling out, Shemuel doesn't know how to respond to it. And that's why Pasuk Dalid is so great. That it really sets you up for that. You think it's like Abraham Avinu, Shemuel, uh, no, 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 no. Shemuel thinks he's talking to Eli. Okay, it happens again a second time. Shemuel doesn't know what's happening. And the, here the Navi actually spells it out to us. Shemuel doesn't know. And therefore, it's something new to him. So we're learning the concept of Shemuel's, if we wish to call it Hakdasha, the beginning of his anointment as a Navi. We see this with other Nevi'im in very interesting ways. The most famous initiation to prophecy is probably Moshe Rabbeinu at the burning bush. Second, second to that is Yeshayahu, where he sees God sitting on the chair, then Malachim shouting Kadosh, 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 a very famous panic of Tanakh, maybe a little bit less known, but also pretty popular, is Yin Miyahu, where Hashem is teaching him how to interpret the visions that he's shown. And God says, I knew you from, from the womb. And here we have Shemuel's initiation. Shemuel's initiation is very strange because he thinks somebody else is talking to him. That's how clueless he is, and it reads in very nicely with Pesukav. Okay. The Yosef Adonai Kero Shemuel Bashilishi, the third time. Vayakum Vayelcha Lili, Vayomen Hininiki, Karatali, even Ali, Ki Adonai, Kore, Lanad. So now finally, Vayavin Ali, Ali understands, and Hashem is calling out to Shemuel. So we have a little bit of progress here coming from Eli, not from Shemuel. Now, the way I would probably read this is that 
Eli should have realized what was happening. Meaning, Eli, if you are somebody who has prophecy, if you are somebody who's the leader of Am Yisrael, you should be able to detect when your trainee is really growing into himself, when he's of the ability to reach prophecy, maybe to have some form of training. And instead, we kind of get the sense that, no, no, he, he's pretty much alone. It takes Eli three times to realize that Shem is calling out to hold, hold this idea in mind, and I'll come back to the Pesukim we saw in Ben and Gimel in a second. Hold this idea in your mind. Okay. Go to sleep. Okay, no, no, listen, this time to speak and say the Ber Hashem. And Pesuk Yud, Vayavo Adonai Vayit Yatsav. Vayikra Kifam Bifam, Shemuel, Shemuel. Vayom Shemuel, the Ber Kishamea Avdecha. Okay. This time Hashem comes himself and Shemuel says, okay. Speak because your servant hears. If you want an interesting parallel to what's happening in the story, and, and Sammy, since you mentioned Shimshon, it's very reminiscent of the story of Shimshon. He goes to sleep three times. She tells him the Pilishtima here, he wakes up. Finally, she finds out a secret and she shaves his hair. The fourth time he wakes up, he can't get up. He's powerless. The Pilishtim sees him. Here it's the exact opposite. Right, when instead of a story, somebody getting initiated, not knowing what's happening, waking up here, it's finally he gets to greet God. So, uh, maybe that would help serve the contrast between Shimuel and Shimshon, which could be the Navi's play. I don't, not 100% sure. So, finally, he starts speaking to Hashem. Okay, what message is Hashem going to have to the Navi Shimuel, this young Navi coming into his own? Let's see, Pasuk Yad Aleph, we'll scroll down. Vayomer Adonai el Shemuel, Hinei Anuchi Aseh Davar B'Yisrael, Kol Ha'asher Shemuel Tisilena Sheteozda. I'm going to do something terrible to Am Yisrael. So notice, notice, that it's a national nivuah. It's a nivuah that's going to be a nivuah of Fun'anut for the nation of Am Yisrael that's going to be something terrible. Whoever hears it, his ears are going to be ringing. And say, oh, whoa. And he says, additionally, and I, I want to make this point clear, Oh, on that day of this national tragedy is going to be the punishment of the Eli as well. Keep in mind, Eli knows the punishment is coming. That's what we saw in the previous panic. So this is not the prophecy for Eli, this is a prophecy for Am Yisrael, and we'll get to it, why does Shemuel get initiated in this way? This Hashem happens to tell him, by the way, Eli is going, the prophecy against Eli is going to come on this day as well. Is this a coincidence? Clearly not. It's holding the nation and the leader responsible at the same time, right? Meaning the leader who will see what he failed to do in a second, which we kind of discussed last week, but we'll see it again, and the nation together create the situation in which they're in. They're both responsible. Therefore, they're both going to suffer. And he's going to know from here that the punishment that I told him that it's going to be Adolam, it's eternal punishment for all his generations, is good. he's going to know because he's going to see it beginning on that day. Why is he getting punished? He, because he knew what his sons were doing. He mekalelim lahem banav. Who are they cursing? Who's they? Mekalelim lahem. They're cursing them. Answer: They're cursing me. This Hashem doesn't want to say it that way. Right? They point out these are one of these tikkun sofrims that we're fixing the text in order to make sure that it doesn't sound like Hashem is cursing himself. Right? Say they're cursing me. They're cursing them. Veloch yahabam Eli didn't interfere. So all the commentators say, "What do you mean he didn't interfere?" He did, he sold them something, but that she comments to other commentaries, but that she, like we said last week, he should have removed them. And he doesn't remove them from their position. And therefore, at the end of the day, he said what he said, but he didn't take action. To say it wasn't sufficient, he was in a position to take action. He didn't do it, and therefore he 
Therefore, I swore to the Beit Eli that their sin is not going to be forgiven with Zeva Haminha, with sacrifices forever. So obviously there's some form of irony here that they're Kohanim and they're trying to forgive other people's sins, but their sins cannot be forgiven through Kurban. The rabbis do read into this, however, through Talmud Turan Ma'asim Tovim and maybe Tefillah, they can be forgiven, which is an interesting statement by Hazal playing the level, the gradations of actions in which they're putting Kurbanot on the bottom, the Tefillah above that, give me Luh Hasidim and Tabu Torah above that. So they're giving you the value system within Judaism, so it's an important statement just because of that, not necessarily because of the sons of Eli. Okay, so we have Pasuk Tevav. What do you do? You have your first prophecy, God spoke to you, you go back to sleep, apparently. By the way, I think this whole chapter is very interesting about the nature of prophecy that he hears a voice and he goes and he runs. Meaning he's not fully into the prophetic trance yet, whichever, whatever that may mean. And it seems to be that different Nevi'im prophesize in different ways exactly what this means for Shemuel. He's not in a prophetic trance. Is very interesting. We're going to see within Sefer Shemuel, other people, when they get prophecy, they're in this trance, and they don't really know what's happening. Here Shemuel gets the message, gets the voice and runs to Eli, so he's still aware. Maybe it's the beginning of the prophecy. I don't necessarily know. So fine, he gets his prophecy. What does he do? He goes to sleep. And then in the morning, he opens the gates to the house of Hashem, which makes sense if he's a Levi. This is part of his job. Now, look at this. Shemuel views Eli as his mentor. He's scared to tell him what he what he heard, because I don't know if Shemuel knows about the prophecy that we saw last week in Pedic Bed. I'm not sure. It sounds like not, perhaps. And therefore, he's scared. I'm, I'm the student. I'm going to tell my mentor. So you can see Shemuel holds Eli in high regard, whether or not he should he calls him, he answers, we see that respect Shemuel has for Eli. So should God do to you if you don't tell me? What should God do to you if you don't tell me? All the commentaries say, hey, God should do to you what happened to me. You should have bad children. Children who are not... Uh, not Hagu, not worthy, which was ironically is going to happen later on in Shemuel's life. Okay, so better tell me. Right? Which is fascinating. Here, there's a prophecy against him. And what does he do? He says it's in God's hands. Tefillah, pray, something. No, he says it is okay. He's going to do what he needs to do. Uh, some of the commentators suggest that maybe because if you look at Pasuk Yudalid Nishbati Libetili, but we'll come back and we'll give a little bit of a different interpretation as well. Because we know normally when you have a Nivua, a, 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 you could pray, you do something. The nevuah, the prophecy is supposed to motivate you to do something, not to tell you, oh, this is what God's going to do, and therefore sit back and accept it. But we'll talk about this. We'll come back to the second. But Rabbi, it's not news to him. It's not news he knew, to him. He knew this for a while. He knew this for a while. This is upgraded. This one gets upgraded with the shivua, and it gets upgraded that it's going to dovetail with some national tragedy. But you're right, it's not news to him. And the first time, you didn't really see him do much either. That's true, but right. at this point, either he's already praying, or he finished praying, uh -huh. or he uh -huh. never prayed. Okay. Well, we're gonna <laughs> it could pick your poison. Okay, fine. So we're going to talk about, we'll, we'll talk about this, what, what he could have done. And you're right, maybe it's not praying. Okay, we'll get to this. Okay, well, but I'm going to come back to this. Let me just finish the panic first, and then we'll see. Vaigdal Shimuel, Vadunai Ya'imu. Ah, so we'll see something interesting. Shemuel is growing up, God is with him, and whatever he says comes true. Well, he peeled the means he did 
Hashem didn't allow whatever he said to fall to the ground. He made sure it comes true. That's the that's the you the idiom. Shemuel goes into he becomes a national sensation. He's a navi Hashem. It didn't exist. There was a comet. So now everybody knows. Obviously, it's going to set up Shemuel as a role to take uh, to play in the central role of the leadership of the nation, which is very important. But look at Pasuk Aleph. So you have you have the word Hashem three times in this pasuk. What does it mean? God has now continues to appear in Shiloh because he appeared to Shemuel in Shiloh through, with the word of a God, meaning through prophecy. Meaning what's happening here? And the commentators play off Pasuka Aleph. All of a sudden, once Shemuel broke the ice and reformed that connection with Hashem, the prophetic connection, all of a sudden now Nebuah is becoming more popular amongst other people. God is back in action. What does it mean God is back in action in Shiloh? Prophecy. And it's happening tonight that Shemuel is happening to other people as well. We're starting to create a prophetic system. And this is important because we're going to see that prophets become nearly interchangeable. Shemuel dies, there's Natan, there's God, there's Ahiyah Shiloni, there's Isha Elohim that we'll talk about later on. There's all these different prophets that are around that come into play, and we're going to see this this Bnei HaNevi'im, students of the Nevi'im, which seem to be prophetic schools are opening up. So it becomes a much more popular thing, Shemuel restoring the connection between the Amisel and Hashem in the Beit Mikdash, in the, in the Mishkan, in Shiloh. Who is this a indictment of? I mean, it's clear. It's an indictment of Eli. Eli, not only does he fail to remove his sons, he never had, he never created, fostered that connection from Hashem to the people through prophecy. They actually, and this brings us back to Pasuk Ben and Gimel, and the Radak points out, What do you mean he can't see? It's not really germane to the shot of the town. Okay, he can't see. So that's why he's running. He would have ran anyway, even if he could see. He's very old. He's going to see. He's 98 years old soon. So it stands to reason that the true explanation that Radak says is that he can't see prophetically. The Navi has to have the ability to see. And Eli can't see. We saw this from Pasuk Pedekalif, where he accuses Hana of the wrong thing. He misinterprets what he sees. He doesn't have a prophetic eye. And that's what it means, that he might have had it at one point in his life, but now as his sons are sinning and as his style of leadership is not bringing the people closer to Hashem, it's faltering, and therefore he's losing his connection. And that leads us to Pasuk Gimel, Ner Elohim Terem Yichveh. What do I care? The Minorah has yet to extinguish, but rather the Eli's leadership has yet to fully extinguish. He still has some little amount of leadership. It's a small flame, that connection, but now it's going to really be go into something very big and something really a conflagration of God's presence amongst Amisel, a conflagration in a positive way, right? God's going to really be spreading amongst Amisel, Bishut Shemuel. It should come as no surprise that the rabbis, based off of Pasuk and Tehili, Moshe Aharon Bechol Hanav, Shemuel Bechorei Shemuel, they equate Moshe and Aharon to Shemuel, meaning that's how distant these people were at the time. They had such a lack of connection to Hashem, and Shemuel is the one who restores it, just like Moshe and Aharon do when the Jewish people leave, leave Egypt. Meaning, don't focus here on this prophecy and Shemuel's, Shemuel as an individual becoming a prophet. But rather, focus here, read this pedic, as the ability of Shemuel to restore the relationship between Ami Sa'il and Hashem. And that's why it's so important that we focus on this idea that his first prophecy 
is a national prophecy. And we'll see, we'll come back to this and we'll come back to this idea in a little bit when we, and we're going to read Pasuk Aleph of Perek Dalid in order to f- really finish this idea. But first, really, uh, this contrast, I think, the Navi wants to make between uh, Eli and Shemuel in the ability to bring God's presence into the Mishkan, into Shiloh, and into the lives of Am Yisrael. So the Kohen can't do it. So now Shemuel is doing it through a different connection, God speaking to Am Yisrael, which I think is fascinating. Therefore, you, you end off with the words, Bidvar Hashem, at the end of the Perek. So a failure of the Kehuna, but we have a new religious strain arising of prophecy amongst Am Yisrael, read by Shemuel. Now, I want to focus, what, what was Eli's problem here? What is the re- at the core of the failure of Eli's leadership? He removes, he fails to remove his sons. We said, okay, that's his practical sin, but it seems to be the fact that Eli is not aware of the prophecy. It seems to be the Navi really wants to highlight this. God appeared in the Mishkan and he's speaking to somebody and Eli doesn't know about it and quiet until finally the third time Eli realizes maybe this is what's happening, right? It seems to really, for some reason, the Navi is, seems to be agitated with the leadership of Eli. And what, what I'm going to present to you is as follows. From And what really is driving me here is Eli's statement, Hashem hu is almost a relationship that seems to be between Eli and God, and this manifests itself in how he runs the Mishkan, it seems to be if we have our two constructs of Avinu and Malkenu, it seems to be Eli's leadership is Hashem is our Melech. He's not our father. What do I mean by that? Look at Hana and the interaction between Eli and Hana. Hana goes to the Mishkan. She's crying. She's begging. She's calling out to God. How is she relating to God as a father who's going to have mercy? Hashem, you could help me. I have a problem. Please help me. Please give me. She's crying to him. She's getting emotional with him as a daughter and a father would get. Elise sitting there, he's all agitated. How could you respond this way in the Mishkan? The Mishkan we, we, is like a God's palace. There's a certain behavior that's required in the palace. We don't show emotion in front of the, in the king's court. It's emotionless. It's very formal. Therefore, what, is he, what he's upset about that is his children is, if this is a formal thing, how could you behave this way? We're lacking the formality, and the people are speaking about it. And therefore, the personal connection with God falls to the wayside. And Eli, oh, Hashem hu, it's almost like this formal, rigid relationship. He's not even challenging it. And, and Teddy, I would tell you, it's not so much through tefillah, but teshuvah. You see, Hashem is sending you again a message. Remove your sons. Take more action. You didn't do it the first time. You spoke to them. It didn't work. Okay, take more action. But it seems to be this rigid notion of his relationship with God is what does not enable him to create a personal connection. Whereas Shemuel, who's the daughter of uh, the son of Hana, who has that father-daughter relationship with Hashem, that relationship of Avinu, he's the one who establishes that personal connection. If you don't like the construct of Avinu Malkenu and it's not working perfectly for you, you could use the construct of Yudke Vavke versus Delukim, meaning is God the God of the universe or is he our master? Does he have a personal connection to us? But that seems to be what is. And if we're correct in our analyzation, it's really going to explain what happens in Perek Dalit. It's really the story of what happens in Perek Dalit is directly based on this concept. So let's show you the first pasuk of Perek Dalid, and then we'll see what happens. But already we get the sense that we're trying to shift leaders from Eli, the broken model of Eli, to Shemuel. I mean, that's what the text is reading. Well, I don't think we need to kill Eli. Yeah, I think we could put it in a positive sense, this idea of a melech and a little bit of an austere relationship. It's not, it's not a great relationship, but it's, yeah, I don't think he's trying to actively disrespect God. 
and keep in mind also his old age. Look at Pasuk, Pasuk Aleph of Perik Dalit. How would we read this Pasuk within a vacuum? If you don't know the rest of the story, what would you assume happens? We're coming from Peregimel. We're coming from this idea that everybody knows the man Shemuel and Avila Hashem. And then it says, there was the word of Shmuel, the Holy Sail, and Yisrael went out to greet the Pilishtim for war. So what's the assumption here? Well, the simple assumption on base value. Why is Am Yisrael going to war? Well, that's what they were commanded by Shmuel the Navi. What's the problem? There are two problems. Number one, this war ends up being a disaster for Am Yisrael. This is the disaster that Shmuel prophesized about in Peregimel, but he didn't know specifically what it is, but this is it. And Ailee's family falls in this war, and a national tragedy happens to Am Yisrael. But number two, if you look later on in Pasu Gimel, just notice these words. We ignore exactly what happens. We'll deal with this next week. But note who's absent, who is not part of the decision making here? Shimuel the Navi. So, A, Shimuel the Navi is telling them to go to war and that they're going to lose. And then, B, he's not involved in the decision making. Now, some of the commentators to actually try to answer no, we found the Navi sending Amisel to war to lose. But still, you would think if Shimuel. His first national thing is to lead Am Yisrael to a war, and he doesn't tell them they're going to die, and then they all die. You would think Shemuel is not going to gain the understanding that he has amongst the nation that he will have later. They're difficult to posit. So therefore, I think what she says here is a more simple explanation. The he devar Shemuel chol is, and the, this we're telling you how the word of Shemuel. Became, that he prophesied about Am Yisrael and Pedagimel, how it came to fruition. Not that Shemuel actively prophesied and told them to go to war. No, he had a prophecy, something bad is going to happen. And now the Navi is telling you, this is the fulfillment of Shemuel's prophecy about Am Yisrael. But not that he actually told them anything. He has yet to have national standing amongst Am Yisrael, this is the story, Eli Hafni of Pinhas, by the end of Perik Dalid, are going to be out of the picture. And that's going to leave room for Shemuel to grow into his own. And, the, and really, it leads to this idea of what Hazal say, Nere Elohim Tem There was still some form of leadership with Eli. Shemuel is growing into his own, so that when the vacuum is created, Shemuel is going to be ready. To step in, but and the rabbi is really so. Rabbi, what about, sorry, rabbi? What about yeah. pasuk kaf of Perigimel, where it says that everybody in Israel, you know, knew Shmuel to be a navi Hashem? Mm -hmm. Like, how did they? He must have. How did he gain their trust already by by that point? Oh, so it could be he said minor things. They would come to him with personal problems. That's what the commentary suggests. Like Shaul is going to do, Shaul is going to come to Shmuel to find the donkeys. And they call him Doroe, by the way. That's where we learned they called the Navi Doroe. So they would come to him with personal problems. And he would help them with the personal problems, problems based on prophecy. And we'll talk more about this later. Why this makes sense that I'm bombed has a very interesting comment about this idea when we get up to it. But he's not do, he's not in a position of national leadership. He's just recognized as somebody who has who's a Navi Lashem. That doesn't mean the Navi is going to be the leader. Keep in mind, all the leaders of Am Yisrael have traditionally been what we'll call a Shofet. You want to call Moshe a Melech in a sense, right? They had this ability to lead the people that didn't necessarily come from prophecy. And there were prophets who weren't leading the people. 
So here you have the religious leadership and Shemuel is growing into this religious leadership, but it doesn't mean he can command the nation to war at this point in time. If you want to contrast it, later on, Shemuel is actually going to lead the people into war. Wait, no, 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 much, much more earlier. Okay. Um, where is it? Perik Vav? No. Oh, there we go. Shemuel is actually going to lead the nation into war in Perik Zion. Here we go. All right. He actually gathers them and he tells them to go to war. And at that time, he leads the war. He actually dedicates. He dedicates this rock, Adhena Azaranu Hashem. So this is something interesting that Shemuel does end up playing a role of a leader, a national leader, and that's why you'll see the words by Shput Shemuel at Israel Hayat. Here we, we didn't say that in Perigimo. He's not yet the Shofit. He's not let, yet leading the people. He's an Avi, and they're recognizing that he's a man of religious stature. That doesn't is mean that, that also why is that also why maybe he didn't tell or couldn't tell the people of the prophecy the, that he knew that this that this battle with the pillage team was ah, going to be a disaster. So, so keep in mind, it could be Shemuel doesn't know. He just says Hashem just tells him, "I'm going to do something." Or say the Vad Yisrael call Hashem Hashem Otis Ilem Nashteuzdan. The Navi fills us in. This is the Vad Shemuel as an introduction to the Pedic. So when we see how there's going to be a war, there's uh, something's going to happen. But Shemuel might not know that. He might have not been told the specific details of what's happening. Right. Meaning that the national tragedy could have been something different. It didn't to, to right. Shemuel. He didn't know. Spe- yeah. It's possible he didn't know specifically it was whatever this battle gonna, with the pillage right, team. Exactly. That, that was going to be the tragedy. Correct. Okay. Correct. Correct. So okay. ne- next week, what we'll spend time talking about we'll spend time talking about how we could see how the people, their religious uh, level and connect it back to our Lee, how to relate to Hashem. We'll see that. And we'll talk about the Pilishtim, where they come from and what Hashem is going to do. One of the most fascinating Pirakim in Tanakh is Perek Dalet, And maybe if we're lucky, we'll even try to cover it with Perek Hay, depending upon the time, because it's really connected to each other. And, uh, and I think really we start developing this idea of prophecy through Shemuel, creating a new connection to God. And that that's the last thing I'll mention is one thing we didn't get to yet. Remember how it said in Pasu Gimal, Asher Sham Aron Aron Elohim. Why does it need to tell me that Aron Elohim is 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 in the Mishiloh? Because what we'll see, this is clear. The Navi wants to set up this idea that God appearing to Shmuel is because the Aron is present. God interacts through the Aron. Uh, if you want the most simplest way to understand this, Moshe Rabbeinu, when he hears something, God speaking to him, the voice is emanating from the Kiruvim. So it almost sense the reason Shmuel is hearing the voice Emanating from the Aron, that could be what's happening, very similar to Moshe Rabbeinu. But we're going to see what happens. This is Aron Elohim creating a connection with Hashem and God prophesizing. And we're going to see instead what Am Yisrael does and Perek Dalet in a very tragic way. So we'll pause here for today. And uh, everybody have a good night.